Hello, I'm Dan Jurgen, and welcome to CIRWE Conversations presented by IHS Market. We're very pleased today to be talking with Dr. Sultan Al Jaber, who's the CEO of Adnoc, which is uh, the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and one of the largest energy companies in the world. He's also Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology. And when I first met Dr. Sultan, he was just beginning more than a decade ago to define renewable energy strategy for Abu Dhabi, and he then established uh, Mazdar to implement that strategy. So uh, Dr. Sultan, we have a lot to talk about this morning uh, and today, and I do want to thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Dan. I'm very happy to be with you, and it's nice to see you again. Uh, in fact, I'm very pleased to join you for this uh, Sierra Week conversation. Thank, thank you, you again. Well, I thought we might just begin by talking about how uh, ADNOC has remained resilient during these times. You know, Dan, uh, this has really come down to the fact uh, that we have started realizing the benefits and the upside of the transformation we started about four years ago. I remember having a conversation with you uh, at Sierra Week about four years ago about our plans uh, for the transformation in ADNOC at the direction of our leadership. And in fact, uh, these unprecedented times have only highlighted just how forward thinking uh, our leadership's guidance uh, and drive was in ensuring mm -hmm. that we conduct such a comprehensive transformation at ADNOC. As you know, uh, we have concentrated our efforts on improving our performance, strengthening our agility, while of course ensuring that we reinforce efficiency throughout the value chain of our business. Of course, throughout this whole exercise, we focused on what we can control, which is simply our costs. We don't control uh, anything beyond uh, our uh, boundaries of our business, like the price of oil. So our focus throughout has been on cost. As a result, we have been able to manage uh, the situation, maneuver uh, throughout the different uh, dynamics of the market, and remain resilient through this downturn, while also delivering against our strategic uh, objectives and priorities. Thank you. You describe uh, how the company's been resilient. And of course, uh, we recognize uh, what you've been doing in terms of the transformation and, and partnerships. Uh, health safety, uh, HSE has been a priority uh, for the company. And specifically, how has that helped during this uh, pandemic? That is a very important point. Uh, in fact, you make a very valid point. This whole experience if anything, it has reinforced just how important uh, to have a strong HSE culture uh, to help protect your people, your business, and your assets. In fact, one of the reasons we have come through this period in relatively good shape is our well-founded and our well-established focus on what we call at ADNOC the 100% HSE. This safety first approach uh, is in fact very much in line with the UAE's overall response to the pandemic, which has always prioritized the health and safety of everyone living here in the United Arab Emirates. Basically, what we've done is that we have deployed a test early and test often approach to managing the pandemic. Uh, and as for the UAE, the UAE so far has carried out more than 5.5 million COVID tests. That is easily the highest per capita ratio in the world. In addition, and at ADNOC, we have taken extra precautions to enhance the safety of our employees and our colleagues. And that, of course, included the comprehensive testing and minimizing staff on site. We did not, of course, allow uh, for any disruptions to our operations, 
And again, that is due to the very strong, well-founded HSE culture across our operations. So maybe I might just ask you as a sub point from that, um, your headquarters is a very tall building. Uh, how are you handling the return of employees? People are very interested in, in it's a very important question. Again, uh, because of the well-founded, well-instilled 100% uh, HSE culture, it wasn't at all a difficult task for us as the management to communicate uh, the precautions and the new policies and the guidelines to cater for uh, our approach in the fight against this pandemic. Our employees and our colleagues across the board, including the headquarters, have been so positive and so responsive and very quick and their response and reply to how to adapt to the new norm. Of course, uh, keeping distance, uh, ensuring that at all times they're wearing their, uh, their masks and gloves is, is very essential. And that is well understood by everyone uh, in the headquarters. And, and I think you mentioned that you, you've instituted the flex time to manage the movement of people in and out of the building, which is, or maybe you could just explain how that works. Exactly. We've also adopted uh, flexi time uh, in terms of people arriving uh, at the building and leaving the building. So we've allowed for two and a half hour uh, window uh, to ensure that we don't uh, jam uh, our corridors or our elevators in terms of people coming in or, or leaving the building. Right. Well, while all this is happening, of course, uh, we've seen great volatility in the unbelievable volatility in the oil market. What's your sense of the oil market today after you know, several months now with this pandemic? The fact is, then, uh, is that no one is in a position to predict what the shape of economic recovery will look like uh, in the long term. These are multiple, uh, there are multiple uh, variables. On the positive side, the market has clearly tightened in the last two months. And this happened, of course, because of the fact that economies have begun to reopen. Uh, the approach of OPEC and its leadership also helped build confidence in the market. And as a result, we are seeing a robust return of oil demand. And this is mainly coming uh, from China. Having said that, our industry will have to remain cautious and nimble. They will need to continue their focus on cost and being uh, cautiously optimistic as we adjust to the multiple structural macroeconomic changes taking place around us today in the world. Well, as you, as you, you stress the importance of caution and not knowing, of course, in any clear way what economic recovery will look like over the next couple of years. What's been the impact of that on your investment plans, uh, the pace of it, whether you've changed uh, the pacing? You and I, you and I have had uh, a similar conversation multiple times uh, on uh, Adnoc's approach in terms of its growth uh, and investment plans. Uh, in simple terms, our investment strategy remains the same. Uh, it, is, it continues to focus on unlocking value, uh, looking at uh, every opportunity across the value chain, making smarter use of our capital, and more proactively managing our assets. As you know, only this past June, we completed a $20.07 billion energy infrastructure investment deal. That transaction, which is known to be the largest uh, for 2020, demonstrated the confidence that the global investment community has in Abu Dhabi and the United Arab Emirates as a highly trusted and attractive investment destination. And just last week, we created a shipping joint venture with China's Wanhua Chemicals with the purpose of having this new JV act as our uh, vehicle to transport LPG to growth markets. 
And we see some of the biggest opportunities right here at home, uh, presented by ADRA, where we are making smart investments to expand our operations, uh, of course, especially in the downstream, in the refining and petrochemical business, as well as derivatives. And this is mainly to drive the UAE's industrial growth and to increase the in-country value. A prime example of this is our recently formed and announced joint venture with one of our largest Abu Dhabi holding companies, ADQ. Their mandate is to create an investment platform to incubate new businesses and a new investment opportunities in the downstream business, uh, mainly petrochemicals, and to help attract domestic and international partners to invest alongside us. And of course, to accelerate the development of our petrochemicals and derivatives industry here uh, in the UAE. I must say that the opportunity here is just huge. Uh, we are providing a unique value proposition whereby we capitalize on our existing world-class infrastructure, high quality, competitive feedstock, and of course, our excellent geographic location to drive sustainable growth. So this, in fact, is an open invitation from ADNOC, from the UAE, to the investment community to come and engage with us in an open dialogue and to identify new investment opportunities in the downstream business of uh, oil and gas. And we will soon be sharing with the investment com community a number of uh, investment opportunities in the downstream area. I mean, I mean you've certainly emphasized from the beginning uh, proceeding in terms of partnerships and specific parts of the business rather than one kind of master approach to it. And I guess that's what's represented in, in the ventures that you described, but partnerships have been your dis distinctive uh, approach here. This has always been uh, how we conduct business here uh, in Abu Dhabi and in the UAE. Uh, we try to uh, develop opportunities to help establish new relationships and new partnerships that are of mutual benefit and mutual interest. And this has been actually working uh, very well uh, to achieve our objectives as well as to meet the objectives and the interests of many partners uh, from around the world. You've mentioned new technologies, and of course you now have a second very significant post. You're Minister of Industry and Advanced Technologies. What is this ministry's, what are, what is, what's its mandate? Then, as you know, COVID-19 has required both, whether it's countries or even organizations and companies, to take a good look and reflect at their long-term resilience. And as such, this new ministry was established to help support our national agenda to diversify the economy by empowering and in enabling industrial growth and value retention. It will focus on industries of strategic importance to our national economy and our national uh, agenda with the aim to promote in-country value while, of course, helping create new jobs as well as export-driven companies that will help drive industrial development. At the core of our mandate in this ministry is the four IR, the fourth industrial revolution, and specifically the synergies between industry and technology, including, of course, machine learning, the internet of things, automation, and digitization. Similar to ADNO, this new ministry will extend an open invitation to all those around the world that wants to explore partnership opportunities with the UAE and its different institutions. In some ways, the strategic objectives 
of this new ministry represent a natural extension of the work we've been carrying out at ADNOC over the past four years. We have been enabling the industrial development of the UAE by going further downstream and prioritizing in-country value, in -country value uh, across all of our procurement and new contracts, as well as all of our new projects, while we have been adopting new, very advanced technologies and digitizing our value chain. In short, the new ministry will help bridge the gap between the energy, manufacturing, and high-tech sectors to accelerate the comprehensive economic development and the efforts of diversifying the UAE economy. So how do you, I mean, just how do you see in terms of the number of hours in the day, how do you combine your responsibilities as minister with being the CEO? How do they fit it all, it all boils down, it all boils down uh, to the teams uh, and the capabilities you have around you. I must say that I have been blessed uh, and lucky with a very competent, uh, robust team that have been supporting me throughout. All right. Well, let me ask you, which tech since advanced technologies, which ones are you most excited about right now? Today, we are uh, in an era where breakthrough technologies uh, from artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain, big data, and predictive uh, analytics are delivering fast and unprecedented progress for humanity. Uh, we have seen through this entire COVID experience that digital economy has become central. Some new technologies have been introduced only in the past six months that have helped reshape how economies are structured. And the UAE not only understands the critical impact of this transition, but is in fact directing investment in that space. For example, we have created the world's first AI dedicated institute here in Abu Dhabi, the Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence, which will enroll its first intake of students uh, this coming January. I believe there is significant potential uh, for uh, AI-inspired technology to help push the frontiers of progress across multiple sectors, particularly in the oil and gas industry. At ADNOC, we are embedding the latest technologies across our value chain uh, of our business uh, that have helped already enhance efficiency maximize our performance and help of course enhance our profitability across the business we are also using predictive analytics to help reduce our maintenance costs and big data is accelerating our decision making process in such volatile market conditions at the same time we are very excited about the potential of ccus to help reduce carbon emissions. And as you know, uh, because I remember talking to you about this before, we already capture 800,000 tons of carbon for enhanced oil recovery. And we do have real plans to expand our CCUS network and capacity to 5 million tons per year. This will be fundamental in ensuring that we are one of the most carbon efficient oil and gas companies in the world. And we are well, very proud of, of yeah, such a that's very The phrase carbon efficient is a very good phrase and carbon capture use and storage is, is an essential technology that will be required for the future energy mix. And so your focus on it will be very significant. I agree. Uh, Dr. Sultan, I still have a very vivid memory of meeting you more than a dozen years ago when we were just beginning to study another set of technologies called renewables, and you were beginning to delineate a map forward. How do you see the renewables today? 
I do actually remember uh, the first acquaintance uh, and the first meeting I had with you, and it was back uh, in 2005. Longer ago uh, than I thought. Wow. Yeah, that was 2005 mm -hmm. uh, when I was mandated by our uh, very visionary leadership to go on a fact-finding mission uh, to better understand how can we uh, develop a more comprehensive, uh, more holistic, approach to a diversified energy mix here in Abu Dhabi. And we have been, in fact, a long-standing supporter of a diversified energy mix. And we believe uh, it makes a perfect economic sense to invest uh, in all forms of energy. We were, uh, as you know, the region's first mover in promoting, adopting, and investing uh, in advanced energy like renewable energy and clean technologies. And we are already home to two of the world's largest solar projects, Nur Abu Dhabi and the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park uh, in Dubai. And very recently, we just announced plans to create the world's largest solar project here in Abu Dhabi, a two gigawatt facility that is 2,000 megawatts uh, that will help almost double the capacity of our two previously largest projects. In total, we have launched renewable energy projects totaling almost 13 gigawatts in the UAE and across 25 countries around the world. And let's not forget uh, nuclear energy. Just last month, the UAE became the first Middle Eastern, first Arab country to begin operations for a nuclear power plant. And later this year, the Baraka uh, nuclear power plant will begin delivering safe, commercial, zero carbon energy to homes throughout the United Arab Emirates. That is a big achievement that we are very proud of. Well, just a couple more questions, but one, given your, and your deep experience with renewables for a very long time now, what explain and the commitment that you've made to solar, what explains this revolutionary drop in the price of solar in your mind? Solar energy has been around for a very long time. What has been missing is the fact that you needed to stop the fragmentation that was happening within the sector. And what we have seen happen over the past decade or so is a comprehensive, holistic, will coordinated unified approach to the advancement of renewable energy and in particular uh, in solar power what has been really uh, missing over the years was capital and ability to scale up the technology to help uh, increase its efficiency and reduce its cost and that's exactly what happened by applying large capitals and large scale projects you were able to advance the technology and bring the cost down and uh, we are uh, a proud partner uh, to many companies around the world, whereby we uh, engaged with them in some research and development project projects, as well as investing in some of uh, the technologies that have helped reduce the cost and enhance the efficiency of such solar panels. You bring a unique, really a unique ex uh, perspective from your experience to the question that is kind of dominating the uh, whole energy world today, which is the future of the energy mix. Uh, how do you see it evolving? We had to come to terms with the realities. No single source of energy can meet long-term global energy demand or global energy requirements. Uh, even in the most fast-paced transition scenarios, Oil and gas will still provide over half of the world's energy. And this presents us with the key challenge of how to produce more energy with fewer emissions. We saw this as a unique opportunity. And in fact, this challenge plays to one of ADNOC's strategic advantages. Because we are not only one of the lowest cost producers, but also among the lowest carbon producers in the oil and gas industry. This combination of low cost and low carbon 
gives us in the UAE a distinct competitive edge. This year, we launched a comprehensive sustainability strategy that reinforces this competitive edge and builds on the legacy of environmental stewardship set by the UAE's founding father, Sheikh Zayed, who have instilled environmental stewardship as an integral part of our economy. Our goal is to remain best in class in sustainability and maintain our position among the world's lowest carbon emitters. In the final analysis, Dan, the world is going to need oil and gas for some considerable time to come. It is up to us as oil and gas producers to deliver that energy as responsibly and as sustainably as possible. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Sultan. And that's, a, I think, a very strong point on which to conclude our discussion. We appreciate uh, your joining us today. We're grateful for the time to talk with you. We've been talking in this Sir Week conversation with Dr. Sultan Al Jaber, who is the CEO of ADNOC, the National Oil and Gas Company of Abu Dhabi, as well as the Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology. And we've covered the response, uh, the impact of COVID on a major company, talked about the energy markets, talked about advanced technologies, and what the energy mix of the future will be. Thank you for joining us in this Sir Week conversation. Thank you very much, Dan, for the opportunity.